The speech President Obama gave in Prague is a touchstone for this administration. It gives us both an organizing framework and a detailed agenda. And today, just 13 months after that speech was given, the administration has delivered already on a number of the pledges in the speech, even as we recognize that we have much more work to do. Let me just list a few of the things we feel that we've made great progress on. Uh, last month, as, as Strobe mentioned, President Obama and President Medvedev signed the New START Nuclear Reduction Agreement. And I know that Rose and Tom Moore and uh, Strobe and, and Steve all this morning discussed this in great detail. But let me simply make the point that this agreement is not only in America's security interest on its own merits, but we are already seeing how its completion has set a positive tone for the NPT Review Conference in New York. It helps consolidate our leadership in the nonproliferation system and enables us to work on the very difficult challenges of repairing and reinvigorating the nonproliferation regime and the NPT, which stands as a cornerstone. We will continue to engage the Senate and the hope, excuse me, we will continue to engage the Senate and we hope that the long history of bipartisan support for nuclear arms reduction agreements negotiated both by Democratic and Republican presidents will be continued by the Senate. Number two, in April, we released a historic nuclear posture review. This document, for the first time, is completely unclassified, laying out our policies and the direction of our nuclear strategy for the next 10 years and beyond. It sets an example for transparency we encourage other nuclear states to follow. The review makes clear that our nuclear capabilities will be dedicated to addressing the major threats we face today, that of nuclear proliferation and nuclear terrorism. And while we are committed to maintaining a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deterrent for as long as nuclear weapons are needed for our security and that of our allies, we will work to reduce the number of nuclear weapons we have, the role they play, and to achieve the conditions that will allow us to adopt a sole-purpose nuclear strategy even as we pursue the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons, as the President has stated. And I know that this will be of some interest. I look forward to engaging in a conversation on the NPR during the Q&A. We are also pursuing the President's ambitious but achievable agenda to secure all vulnerable nuclear materials in four years. The historic Nuclear Security Summit saw leaders from 47 countries make an unprecedented global commitment to nuclear security, and we have laid out a work plan that will enable real progress in keeping nuclear materials off the black market and out of the hands of terrorist groups. And we look forward to the Republic of Korea's hosting of the Nuclear Security Summit in 2012. We have also made significant progress in isolating Iran over its clear and repeated violations of the nonproliferation system, having been found in noncompliance with its safeguards obligations and having failed to comply with UN Security Council resolutions. Iran finds it has few friends willing to defend its actions and is facing the prospect of new and tougher sanctions over its nuclear activities. The statements by the UN Secretary General and the IEA Director General on Monday in New York are but a sampling of the kinds of global chorus you will hear over the coming days, making clear that Iran's room to maneuver is shrinking. As Secretary Clinton said, for all the bluster of its words, the Iranian government cannot defend its own actions, and that is why it is facing increased isolation and pressure from the international community. And as my boss, the Vice President, pointed out, the Iranian regime is more isolated domestically, regionally, and internationally than it has ever been. Our actions to date not only make it easier for states to support tough actions on Iran, but harder for states to resist such steps. And we have also shown North Korea that their proliferation and traditional crisis tactics will not bring them anything other than isolation and economic pain, and that the only path for them is to return to the six-party talks and to resume their denuclearization activities. Now, this is just a a listing, a sampling of the efforts we're taking. And in my prepared remarks, I won't get into detail on a lot of other steps that we're taking to prevent nuclear smuggling of materials and technology, to improve the ability of the International Atomic Energy Agency to detect illicit nuclear activities, even while promoting peaceful use of nuclear technology, our efforts to negotiate a ban on the production of fissile materials uh, for nuclear weapons, or to ratify and bring into force the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. We are doing all of these and more. And we are doing them not only because they are the right way to protect the country, but also because they're the right way to prevent proliferation and because it is what the president said he would do when he ran for the office of president. 